This is CHSR 97.9 FM here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada. This is Python's Paradise, your film and music show. And this is your host, Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. the Python Hyena. And folks, I have, well, not my first stunt woman on the show, but a stunt woman nonetheless. One that's, uh, I like to call one of the veterans. She's definitely uh, got her work cut out for her, uh, doing stuff way back, well, right about the time I was born. <laughs> which would have been in those early 70s. <laughs> I have the gifted and talented Jean Coulter on the phone. How you do, Jean? I'm doing great, Greg. Thank you so much. That was really nice. <laughs> gifted is good. <laughs> well, I had, uh, as uh, Steve Joyner had mentioned, I had uh, Marlene Lynn uh, Fields on here um, early last month, and uh, you, I understand you're affiliated with her, huh? Oh, yes. We worked together years ago in Salt Lake City in the mountains there. So, yes, we had a great time in the snow. (laughs) We're still friends on Facebook, so it's kind of neat. You know, it's been quite a few years, so I I like to catch up with our friends. I like Marnie a lot. Um, she sent me a lot of photos to use for the YouTube transfer of, of uh, her interview whenever I get it up, which uh, it hasn't aired here yet, so <laughs> it, it'll be a while. But uh, I had her on, and then she had me interview her, her husband, um, John Harrison, who's a film historian, and uh, uh, talked to them both in uh, Australia. And so, oh, yes. They're special. Yeah, I enjoyed talking to both of them very, very much so. And um, in fact, the other night I just sent uh, uh, John some uh, uh, clips on from YouTube uh, uh, from some of our Canadian uh, <laughs> Um, stuff here, like Bong Cop, Bag Cop, of course, is our highest grossing Canadian film, so I, I sent him a clip from that, and uh, he's very, very interested in that. Uh, Bong Cop, Bag Cop's having a sequel coming out this year, uh, 11 years oh, after. Great. Yeah. That was a great uh, movie. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's a, a, what you call a bilingual <laughs> film. It's, a, it's part English and part French. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, excellent. Threw him a little clip or two from the trailer part boys movies as well. So. Uh, <laughs> the, oh great! Yeah, he, he's quite an historian. He just knows about everything. It's amazing. Well, he definitely loves his James Bond. I do know that. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> I like the Bond girls. Oh, of course. <laughs> you know, like you know, who who how how can you not like Ursula Andress? <laughs> really, just yeah. gorgeous, just Absolutely. you know, the best, Absolutely. the most beautiful women, really. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about uh, some of the stuff that you. I know you did stunt work through uh, so much. Uh, so many films and television, but I'm going to talk about three films here uh, for the start that you uh, had a a role in. And I guess the first one, of course, is Airport 77, which, of course, is one of those films that Airplane was making fun of. (laughs) Oh, right. (laughs) You know, you played a passenger in this film, huh? Right. I played a passenger. I helped coordinate the stunt work. I uh, doubled Lee Grant, her death scene, um, yeah, I did like three jobs in one, so it was it was busy and it was fun, and we worked with some of the best actors in the world, really. Yeah, I'm looking so. here. I mean, Jack Lemon, um, Brenda oh. uh, Vercaro, who just came off Midnight Cowboy, Joseph Cotton, who worked in Citizen Kane, uh, Olivia right. de Havilland, who's still with us, 100 years old, from Gone with Amazing. the Wind. Yeah. James Stewart, she George Kennedy, beautiful. Christopher Lee. What's that? She was beautiful. So elegant and so beautiful. Yeah. Um, you, you know, her sister was Joan Fontaine. Oh, yeah, from Hitchcock's uh, Rebecca, I believe. Yes, yes. Yeah. I did not know that. But and like, Jimmy Stewart, oh my, was he incredible. Just to listen to him talk, you know, was fun. But well, we worked with a lot of big actors, and they were all so 
so nice and so gracious. We had so much fun, and it was difficult because we worked in water all the time, and, you know, it, it wasn't easy. We were freezing half the time, so it was quite challenging. What was James Stewart like, I, I must ask? Oh, just really kind of a mellow guy and, and kind of quiet. And, you know, when he spoke, though, you knew where he was because <laughs> yeah. you knew the, the voice from the shows. So he was just nice. He was, you know, quiet and uh, I don't know. He, he was just fun. What about Joseph Cotton? Oh, well. He he was Joseph Cotton, <laughs> Citizen Kane, man, <laughs> and and uh, Christopher Lee. He was a character too. He was nice too. I mean, all the all the actors, the big actors, were just so nice. It's it it was a pleasure to work with all of them. You know, we we really enjoyed it to be able to do that and be so close with them. Well, I know we are uh, got connected. Uh, uh, what was a f- half hour ago through Steve Joyner. <laughs> Steve Joyner seems to know everybody. Uh, did you connect with him through uh, uh, social media as I had? Yes. Uh-huh. He found me on Facebook. Okay. And he friended me on Facebook. So, And then he asked me to do his shows. So that was nice. You know, he's a really nice guy. Yeah, he was my first interview this year, and it, it's led to a, just an onslaught of uh, interviews on this show. You're my 135th interview I've done since oh. April of 2015. Wow, that's a lot. I Yeah, and you know what? Um, uh, before this year, only 68 of my interviews have been before this year, so... I have, oh my God! <laughs> yeah. Well, they sure picked up. <laughs> I've done a lot this year. Just last month, I did thirty-one interviews, and I'm like, "How did I? How did that happen? How did I have the energy?" <laughs> right, right, right. And to look everything up and find out about everybody—that's it's not easy. No, but I, I guess we had a good chuckle at a film that. Uh, I'd seen the poster. I haven't seen the movie. We got to talk about this movie, The End, with Burt Reynolds, uh, who directed this film. I guess. Yes, yes. I I played a part in it, and I did the stunt work. Hal Needham was there, the famous stuntman, and we all worked together. Um, it was like the first show I started working with Hal Needham and Burt Reynolds. And I'll tell you something, it was the funniest show I've ever worked on. We just had so much fun from when we came onto the set till we left at night. It was just it was just great working with everybody. It was so much fun. We just laughed all the time. And we had some serious stunt work to do too, so um, you know, we got it all done though and still laughing, so that was fun. Well, um, of course, the premise of this, I guess, uh, Burt Reynolds, I know this is kind of a serious topic, but I guess he, I'll, I'll let you, you give us a little synopsis of the, the movie. Well, um, it's difficult. Well, I guess, I guess, I, mean, Bert, I guess Burt Reynolds wants to kill himself and, and Dom DeLuise being such a good friend tries to help him out with that. And so, yes. And it, it you know, I, I, I just ended up just laughing through the whole thing because it was Dom DeLuise is the funniest man ever. And with Bert, they just had some chemistry that just really made the whole thing hysterical. Um, it, it, you know, what can I say? I, I did mostly the stunt work in, in the, uh, the, the part of a driving teacher, teaching an old woman how to drive. So, um, I wasn't there a lot of the scenes that they did shoot for the movie, but when I saw it, I, I remember I, I couldn't stop laughing. But uh, it's a good show, and I think a lot of people should go see it because it really is an excellent movie. What was it uh, like working with Burt Reynolds as a director as opposed to an actor? Oh, my you know, I didn't notice any difference. He's just such a nice man. And everything has to be light with him and fun with him. And, and he was just quiet. And when he directs, he's just mellow. And, you know, there was never any problems on the set because it was so nice. Um, I, I really enjoyed working with him. He, he has 
has this certain chemistry and certain smile, and he look at you and he gives you that smile of Burt Reynolds, you know, and he just makes you feel good. <laughs> so we had just a great time. I loved working with him, and then they asked me to work on other movies that they did too, so I was very fortunate to do that. Yeah, Burt Reynolds, of course. Yeah, with the smile, the laugh. The <laughs> and, looks. <laughs> yeah, well, he and uh, Hal Needham and uh, Dom DeLuise, of course, uh, would reunite again a few years later for the Cannonball Run. And um, Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wasn't a big fan of Cannonball Run 2 at all, but uh, um, the first one I definitely remember... Uh, <laughs> Uh, especially uh, Roger Moore playing him, uh, playing a secret agent who thinks he's Roger Moore. Um, I thought that was a pretty funny joke on its own. But um, <laughs> I do, uh, with with the end, of course, um, you had Sally Field, and of course, who uh, Berta had worked with in Smokey and the Bandit. And, uh, right. Yeah, do you have any uh, interaction with Sally? No, um, she never worked with me on the set. Oh, okay. They, they worked somewhere else. So my my work was mostly outside, and they, you know, they worked somewhere else. So I did not get to work with her. Well, the end had a pretty good cast. Aside from Burt Reynolds, Dom DeLuise, and Sally Field, Struthers Martin was in this, Norman Fell, uh, Christy McNichol, even Carl Reiner uh, showed up in this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of lot of a uh, lot of good actors and actresses, and um, the film is definitely underrated. Um, I'm surprised it really didn't do better than it did, because it's just hysterical. I mean, if you go see it today, it's hard to beat it. You know, it, it just was a great show. Well, um, yeah, I have not seen this film, and I recognize the poster art. This is a film I definitely should see because I I. I'm a fan of Burt Reynolds. I grew up watching his uh, uh, his movies, and I, I always liked him. Of course, every kid growing up, I mean, they have their heroes. And, of course, everybody, uh, my generation, liked Burt Reynolds, of course. And uh, he was right. just, yeah, he was just that cool guy. And, um, <laughs> yeah. But with uh, the end, I, uh, what would you say... Give us an example of some funny scenes in the movie. Let's, what are appetite appetite with this movie? Well, yeah. Anyways, you're really pressing it. <laughs> yeah. I remember when I worked with Dom DeLuise, and he pulls me out of this car, and you know, you can't you can't not laugh. So a lot of times we'd start laughing, they'd have to cut because it wasn't supposed to be that funny at that time because he was just hysterical. So, um, you know, I, I enjoyed working with all of them. It, it was, the, every scene is different and every scene is hysterical. And uh, I loved working with Bert and I loved working with Hal Needham. Um, the stunts were good in the movie also. Um, that's about all I can say. I, I just, you know, I only worked so long on it. So I wasn't there for a lot of the scenes that were shot. So, um, out of the various methods where he tried to kill himself, what would you say was the funniest moment? <laughs> you know, I, I, I really because I know Steve Joyner was go going back through. and look at this oh. film again because um, I, I only saw it one time. You only so saw it one I time. I really don't remember. I just remember laughing through the whole thing when I worked with him. So. And you could. I don't remember. You, the, and you, and you show that well. And you played a played a. Uh, what, did you say a driving instructor in the film? Right, a driving instructor, and this old lady's in the car, and she wants to go and play uh, chicken with a truck coming straight at us. Oh. So I'm trying to pull the wheel one way, and she's pulling another, and finally it ends up where uh, we do a stunt with the cars, and one car goes on top of the other car, and. And it was just hysterical, but um, that was my part. Okay. Well, you also, of course, had a part in Jaws 2 as well. Uh, yes. <laughs> you want to talk about that experience? Oh, it was, it was interesting. It was challenging because we worked on the water. Okay. And I, I, um, 
had to shoot the shark and had to lift this gas can and throw the gas at the shark, and then I catch on fire in the end. Um, we worked six months on, on my scene, so it'll tell you that we did a lot of work on the show. Um, I did fire work on it, and I, I didn't have a, a fire suit or anything. I just had no max underwear, no gel or anything on my face, and we had fire all over me. So it was quite challenging. I lost my eyebrows and eyelashes on that movie. But um, it, it was a great experience. Um, everybody on the set was excellent. Everybody worked so well together because working on water is so different. You're out there working with fire, the wind's blowing around, so you have no control over where the fire goes. So it was a challenging movie, and the weather, too. It snowed one day, and then it was warm another day, so you never knew what, what you had to face when you went out to work. We also had a lot of jellyfish in the water, and my friend who was a water skier got bit by all these jellyfish, and I remember I pulled her in the boat, and she was, like, passing out. So that was an experience I never had before. <laughs> so um, the whole show, it was just difficult to do because any time you work on the ocean and water, it's, the weather is, is your worst enemy or your best friend. So um, it was challenging. Wow. Um, working with fire, how do you prepare for that? Well, uh, I went to special effects and asked them to help me. And uh, I also worked with a fellow by the name of Dar Robinson. He's a very famous uh, high fall guy. And I used to light him on fire at 200 feet up in the Houston Astrodome years ago. So I learned a lot about fire. Um, and I kind of figured out how I would do it for my scene, just putting the Nomax on and seeing how long I could get hot and not burn, you know, because if you start sweating inside the Nomax, you're going to steam yourself. So I just uh, practiced down at special effects and figured out how long I could be on fire and um, how it would work, and, and that's how we did it, you know, and it worked out perfect. Um, it got hot, but, but it was fine. I didn't get burned. So um, it was it was really an experience for me, and I really loved it because it, it all worked out, you know, because some things don't work out. So um, we were lucky. But you do experiment before. You can't just go out on the set and know nothing about it, you know, or you're going to get hurt. Well, you uh, you got credited, well, uncredited, I guess, according to Internet Movie Database, for a lot stunt work for a lot of films, and uh, I got a list of them here. Um, I'd say my favorite film that you have in your credit is, of course, The Blues Brothers. I love this movie. <laughs> I think it's the greatest film to come out of Saturday uh, Night Live, and just yeah. a fantastic tribute to blues artists and uh, blues music. Um, tell me about your experience on this film. Well, where I worked was in, in a mall, and um, we had cars crashing through big plate glass windows. We had them turning upside down. We were running in front of the cars. Um, every time one of those cars would go through the plate glass window, that glass would fly across the mall and stick into concrete. That's how dangerous it was. Oh. So it was quite challenging. And if you remember that mall scene, I remember so well. <laughs> yes, yes, it was very dangerous, very dangerous. But luckily, hardly anybody was hurt. I think one person got hurt with glass in their arm. But um, we were very fortunate because when you fly through that plate glass, it just goes so far into concrete. It's just you just can't believe it, you know. So it, it was a hard show. You had to. Uh, keep your eyes and ears open so you didn't get killed, really, whether the, it was the car coming at you or two cars or whatever. We were always running in front of cars, and John Landis was the director, and, and he was wanted everything to be so great, you know, so we had to do the, the best we could under the worst circumstances. Yeah, Landis just coming off National Lampoon's Animal House doing the Blues Brothers and uh, uh, doing fantastic with comedy. I love that mall sequence. You know, you got that guy go, got that shot of that guy holding up the stuffed Grover from Sesame Street saying, 
yeah, do you have a Miss Piggy? And then suddenly, bang, everybody's <laughs> in there. And, and oh, my goodness, a cop's in there. And and yeah. uh, just uh, what a wreck, wreck they make yeah. of that poor mall. We tore up that mall. We totally destroyed that mall, if you can believe it. It was yeah. unbelievable. Did you? Every scene. Did you get to uh, associate at all with uh, John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd? Absolutely. Absolutely. I sat with uh, John for hours and hours just talking. You know, he was just really mellow and real quiet. And, and um, we just sat for hours and talked while we were waiting to work. So he was a real nice guy. He really was. Um, I remember his his skits on Saturday Night Live and, and how he made me laugh and um at work, he was more subdued and real quiet and just more thinking about what he had to do. But so talented, you know, what a loss, what a loss. Yes, it was a loss. Um, yeah, I always loved uh, John Belushi and uh, went way too soon. I've done a couple of interviews from the Blues Brothers. I've had uh, Murphy Dunn on here, and I've had Willie Hall. Of course, we're part of the, the Blues Brothers band. And uh-huh. uh, yeah, I've met Dan Aykroyd. He was doing a wine signing here about t- ten uh-huh. or so years ago, and uh, he signed my DVD of the Blues Brothers. Oh, awesome! Yeah. I have so my... was he funny at the time? Yeah, he. T- I have my picture taken with him. He's even after the 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 end of the signing session. He he continued to sign for everybody, even those that were. Uh, yeah, I thought that was really cool of him. Very nice, very yeah. nice. Uh, some of these actors, you know, they they do much more than what's expected of them, and I really think that that's special. I do too, but you know, they work really hard, and and they're so tired at the end of the day. You know, the emotions they have to put out for for being actors is, is a lot of work. Mm-hmm. Now, my question for you with a um, couple of questions about the Blues Brothers, uh, the mall scene, was that the only uh, section that you were involved in? No, I worked outside when we did car work with the cars, and there was a bridge scene where they ran the car all the way up, and it came back and hit other cars. Okay. So we were all in that, too. We, we did the car work, and getting crashed and things like that so yeah there was there was a lot of work for us i i don't remember how many weeks i worked on it but it was a while um so so, you, so yeah. you drove in the mall they as well md drivers so uh nondescript drivers is what we were called okay so you drove in the mall scene huh no i didn't drive i ran <laughs> Oh, you were one of the people running. I'd rather drive. Do, 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 do we see? Driven. Do we see you? Um, you know, it's so fast. Uh, it's so fast. The clips are real fast, so it's hard to see the stunt people, their faces and stuff. But I, I'm in a drugstore, and they crash through all the uh, things on the shelves and stuff, and um, we just run and get out of the way. But you can see our bodies, but. To see our faces, it just is so fast, you know, it's hard to see us. It's not like when I, I have a role and they see my face only. Um, this was just nondescript people running around, so it's difficult to see us. If you look close, you can see us, but the average person wouldn't because it's so fast, you know. Okay. And, of course... <laughs> uh... Yeah, I love the Blues Brothers. It's it's uh, like I said, I've got a lot of fond uh, uh, memories of that film, and uh, I would have been eight years old when that came out in theaters. But uh, oh my! <laughs> I think the best movie again, the best movie to come out of Saturday Night Live, with Wayne's World being a very close second, but the Blues uh-huh. Brothers to me is the best. Yeah, I mean the music and and the guys and the comic. I mean, it is. It really is. And the dancing. I mean, you can't believe John Belushi's doing all that dancing. Yeah, what a talented guy. Uh, um, you also worked on Cujo. Um, of course, I've I've uh, I've interviewed uh, Dee Wallace, who was in that film. Uh, I understand you didn't have such a great time doing this movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course I love Dee Wallace. She's dynamite. And I doubled her in the car. I, I worked with five of the St. Bernard dogs, 
and we trained each one differently. And the one I worked with mostly was, his name was Cubby. And I taught him how to go after a little toy around my neck so that when I got into the car and I'm laying down across the console on the other seat, the dog's on top of me. I weigh 104 pounds. The dog weighed 152 pounds. And we taught him to go for the toy around my neck. Well, we were teasing him, and and it was a long time, and I finally said, get the dog off. By the time they could come in and get the dog, he had started clawing on my chest to get the toy. He wanted the little toy. And um, I lifted up my head when he started clawing, and he was chomping for the toy, and he just chomped off my nose practically all the way off. I had like a sliver of skin holding on my nose. So um, I remember I went to the hospital, and it took an hour to get to the hospital. They held my nose on all that time, and it took three hours to bring a plastic surgeon in to give me 47 stitches to sew it back on. And even at that point, they weren't sure that it was going to make it, you know, because of the blood supply wasn't there. But it did, and, and you can't really tell that I have that scar on my face. So <laughs> it worked out good, but it was challenging. I had to fight the dog, and the night before, I had ran into a, a, a table and broke my foot, and I had to work in high heel shoes while fighting the dog. So that was another experience <laughs> that <laughs> I had on that show. So it was crazy. Wow. And it was, you know... And I thought, I thought D. Wallace had a hard time on that show. I know she said it was quite excruciating for her, but I think you had it worse. Yeah, well, I got hurt, you know, and, and the dog had to go after my leg, too. And even though I had this um, leather piece on my leg, you could feel that dog. He, his, his jaws are so strong, you could feel him clamping down onto my bones of my leg. So it was an experience, and, you know... A dog, you can you can tease him, but you can't tease him too long because they change from being fun to being mad. So um, that was what happened with me, really. And you, I could feel it. I could feel it happening when it happened. And I knew, you know, it was time to get him off. So those things happen, you know. Working with animals, you can only do so much, and, and you just hope for the best. But... Um, you know, it worked out fine. My nose is still on my face, so I'm lucky. Yeah. <laughs> it was well, an experience, you know. Oh, uh, thank God for that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Did Did you see Stephen King at all? No, I did not. We were uh, at this ranch many miles out of Petaluma, and hardly anybody came out to the set, just the people that were immediately working on, on Dee's scene. So um, I never did see him. I wished I had. I think um, Dee said that she had seen him once or twice uh, when he visited the set. Uh -huh. But, uh, yeah, she said he wasn't exactly frequenting the set. But, but Right. Yeah. I'm sure he saw dailies, you know. Instead of going out to the location, all they have to do is see dailies at night instead of running out to wherever we're shooting. Yeah. Well, there's talented, some... Talented man, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, my. There's some other films... Yeah, there's some other films I have listed down here, some of which I have not seen, but i got to ask about them. Of course, I have seen, okay. I have seen Better Off Dead, um, okay. John Cusack. I, I've interviewed Amanda Wiz. I, I really like her a lot. And uh, um, tell me about your work and uh, Better Off Dead. You know, I don't even remember. Oh. You know, when you work every day, you don't even remember the shows. You don't remember the stunts unless it's really a long shoot. Um, so I, I think I did a fight scene or something. I'm not sure. I remember doubling her. But. Um, I, I don't remember what it was, and I'm I'm sorry for that. Oh, you doubled I, I you would, doubled Amanda. Yeah, I believe so. Well, okay, all right. Well, I'll ask you about some of these other films. Going way 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 back to, um, you did a film called Police Women. Uh huh. Yeah. Any anything? Um, I believe um, I was a hostage on that show. Um, you know, a lot of times you'll do parts without lines and, and something where somebody drags you or, or tries to choke you or whatever, a fight scene. So I believe I did a hostage scene on that show. 
Um, so it was kind of a nondescript thing. It wasn't doubly Nanji or anything. Okay, and uh, you did a film called... You can ask me about Charlie's Angels. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get to that. I want to get, I want to talk about some of the films that you were in here first, because uh, you did a film called Co Coast to Coast with Diane Cannon and Robert Blake. Uh-huh, yes. Any, any yeah. memories don't of that? Don't ask me what I did. I don't remember. Oh, you don't remember. Okay. I don't remember. I'm sorry. You know, it's been a while, and... Like I say, when you work 265 days a year doing stunt work, it just all runs together. You know, you do so much work, and you don't even remember what you do unless it's a major role. Okay. Do you remember anything from Honky Tonk Freeway? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I worked with a, a, a lion in that, and I had to double an old lady in the middle of the night, and I had to carry this pound of red meat and throw it over my shoulder to make the lion run after me. And at the same time, they had a, a fire extinguisher that they were going off to make him run faster. So that was an experience, <laughs> running after, you know, the lion running after me and thinking that he could claw the side of my leg off oh, at any time. Jeepers. But that was an experience. And then I also jumped out of a... Uh, uh, Excalibur car and went down 80 feet. Uh, the first time we did it, we were on a freeway, and the Excalibur is supposed to stop right before it goes over the embankment, and okay. I, I fly out of the car and go over the embankment. Well, the first time we did it, the car slid right off the embankment with me, and I'm rolling on the ground, and the tires are right next to me, thinking, oh, my gosh, this car is going to roll on top of me. Well, it didn't. So the next time, they put a big metal barrier so that the car would crash into it, and I would jump out of the car and go 80 feet down the hill. And I was in short shorts, no pads, a uh, sleeveless top, a little tank top. And so that was an experience, too. Um, I didn't break my back or anything, but I, I most definitely stretched out my muscles really good, so I, I had to take a week off so I could get back. <laughs> so that was fun. I, I And we did car work on the show, too. So there were other stunts we did, but the major stunt that I did was uh, jumping out of the car, the Excalibur, and um, running with the, the lion at night. Those those were The lion at night was so different. Even though I was known for working with a lot of animals, I'd never worked with a lion. But this particular lion liked me for some reason and i'd go up and i'd rub rub him and he'd just turn around and kind of purr at me so it was really interesting um that show was was a lot of stunts in that movie a lot of big stunts i also did a stunt in that movie where i'm in a, a motor home and a big huge 10 ton truck flies through the motor home that we're in okay and it, it misses us and all the stuff just blows up in the air and we're still in there, you know. A few things hit us, but but we're still alive, so that worked out good. So, you know, they're all experiences doing this stunt work because you never know what's going to happen. And even if you score something, doesn't mean it's going to break away the way you score it, you know. So that was an exciting one, too. <laughs> How about Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I did a fight scene. I had this... Uh, I don't know why they always dress me in these n short shorts and skin-tight clothes with no pads. And I had this costume that weighed a lot. It had a, a five-pound battery pack on it, so the whole costume would light up. And I had to do a fight scene in it. And <laughs> it was interesting, you know, fighting with that heavy battery on my back end and the whole costume was lit up and having to do a fight scene in a bar. So that was fun. Okay. Different, you know. And, of course, uh, A View to a Kill, uh, 007. I believe that was the last James Bond film Roger Moore did. Was it, Am I correct there? Yes. Uh-huh, it was. What a nice man he was. Um, I did uh, a part in it where uh, the fire truck ladder goes across and hits a camper off of a truck and I'm inside the camper with another stuntman, Eddie Heiss, 
Okay. And uh, we had an explosion in inside the camper, so it had to blow it off. As soon as that ladder hit the camper, the explosion blew it off. We had no idea what was going to happen. And the explosion was very loud, of course, because we're in, in the truck. And as soon as that camper goes blows off the truck, we, we have to get up. Well, it was like 13 degrees. I had nothing on but um, pants, Ugg boots, and a blanket around my top, half of my top. So <laughs> between the explosion and, and being frozen stiff, it still worked out, but we still did an acting part, you know, after that. After the explosion occurred, we had to shot for, for hours that night. So. Uh, I did that, and then I also doubled uh, one of the girls who has to flip a guy, and at the time she flips the guy, the wetsuit has to come off of her. Well, wetsuits don't come off very easily, so we had to shoot that a couple of times so that I could flip the man, and the, he could grab the wetsuit, and the wetsuit would totally come off. So that was challenging, too, and it, it finally worked, but... It was an interesting job because you just don't run into things like that, you know, with the wetsuit problem. And um, then we did car work in, in the up and down the streets. There was a lot of nondescript car work, car crashes and things like that. So we were all involved in that, too. I, I worked like three weeks on that show in San Francisco, and we did a lot of stunt work. So uh, that was a good job, and, and it was fun. And I, I loved Roger Moore. It was so nice and the whole crew, we worked with Remy Julian, who's a famous um, car driver, and um, that was exciting, too, because, you know, very few people get to work with him, because when when we do our work here in America, we usually don't bring in people from Europe. We use our own people first. Okay. So it was nice to be able to work with him. Okay. Well, yeah, I've heard good things about Roger Moore from other guests I've had as well. Uh, yeah. he, one of a kind. I remember he walked up to me at night, and we were shooting the scene where I with the wetsuit. He he comes up. He says, hi, I wanted to meet you. And I turned around. He says, I'm Roger Moore. And I'm thinking to myself, yes, I know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> so he was just a nice man, just, uh, just, you know, classy, nice man, very handsome and, and just very mellow and and nice with that smile he has, you know. So, so he was really nice to work with too. Yeah, I, I remember <laughs> interviewing Julie Don Cole from Willy Wonka on the Chocolate Factory, and uh, she was uh, recalling working with him on another film, and uh, said that uh, um, in between takes he was eating this these bowl of grapes, and he was like sharing them with her. <laughs> <laughs> That figures. He was just a nice guy, you yeah. know. He was just really down to earth and just really a nice man. I I remember we were laughing a lot with him. He was always saying something funny. Yeah. One more film I want to bring up is called Out of Bounds, um, with Anthony Michael Hall. I I had to interview Jenny Wright, who was in the film, and uh, and um, right. Yeah, Jen, Jenny. I'm still in touch with. Uh, I remember uh, going through a lot to try to get her on my show, and um, oh. but when I got her on, not only was she a wonderful guest, but uh, as of right now, of uh, the 48 interviews I did last year, hers has got the most views on YouTube right now. <laughs> oh, awesome. Oh, yeah. She's she gonna... had real short, pumped up hair, right? Oh, yeah. Real radical. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 I remember. Yeah, I, I remember. I, I don't. I don't know what I did for her on the show, but I remember we worked together and we had a great time. She's just really nice. Yeah, I like. And Jane I remember Hill. the hair. I remember wearing a wig with the hair. <laughs> yeah, Jenny's got really cool hair. She still has really cool hair. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I think I think Jenny is really cool, and um, I'd love to see her do more work. But uh, I think she slowed down a little bit. I think she wants to do a book. I know that I know that. So, so uh -huh. I'm hoping to get her back on here. I know I've been in talks with her, but uh, 
I thought she was awesome. Now, I, I, I even have a picture of her. I remember we were laughing so much, and, and I have a picture of her when we were at work. So she was just really fun and really nice and down to earth, too. So we had a good time laughing. Well, you mentioned Charlie's Angels. Now, <laughs> you, I think I'm under the impression you've got a lot of Charlie's Angel stories. So I'm going to yes, uh, yeah. yes. share I, your Charlie's Angels. <laughs> I started out with the pilot, and I doubled all three girls on the pilot. I doubled Sarah, and I doubled Kate, and I doubled Jacqueline. Um, so that was kind of exciting. You know, I go from one wig to another wig to another wig. So, um, and then when the when the series started, um, I just doubled Sarah. And um, once in a while, I doubled Jacqueline, but she was taller than me. I'm only 5'3", so... Um, you know, uh, and Kate, once in a while I double Kate too, but yes, I did a lot of work on Charlie's Angels through the years. Uh, some, um, some big stunts on the show. Um, and I had fun with the girls. They were all great. So it was a good TV series for me. Yeah. What a loss when, uh, Farrah Fawcett, uh, left us, you know, um, oh, it's just I, I couldn't believe it, to tell you the truth, because she was really into health. She played tennis a lot, and I was just kind of in shock. You know, I, I never thought she would die. I, I really didn't. I thought for sure she'd find a cure, but, you, you know, you know yeah, what, uh, she was so young. You know what really got me? The Academy Awards did not put her image on the memoriam because they consider her a TV actor. And I'm like, are you kidding me? She's done a ton of movies. So exactly. yeah, yeah, there was a little exactly. controversial there. I, I totally agree with you. Yeah. I totally agree. Well, you know, politics in our business, what can I say? Oh yeah, absolutely. But, um, Fair, of course, that big uh, poster of hers. You, of course, you see it in Saturday Night Fever, and again, yeah. you see it again in Boogie Nights as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She was beautiful. Yeah, she was really beautiful and sweet too. Very sweet. Now, you did you did I know that later on, of course, Tanya Roberts came into Charlie's Angels. Did right. you work any with her? Uh-huh. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. I worked with Tanya. I worked with all of the girls because I was on it off and on. You know, I'd go do other shows. I wasn't on a weekly contact or anything, so I'd take other jobs. So, uh, But, no, I worked with every girl that was on the show, every girl. And a lot of times I could double them because I had the facial, the side of my face looked like all the girls. So a lot of girls, especially Cheryl, they would film me from the side. If Cheryl was sick or something, they'd, they'd have me come in and, and they'd film me from the side. So I was lucky in that respect. And, and my body shape was the same as the girls. So um, it all worked out pretty good. It was a good show for me. So uh, out of everything you've done, would you say Charlie's Angels was your, uh, your best experience? Oh, boy. <laughs> Probably. Probably. I didn't do the big stunts on Charlie's Angels, although I did a lot like car hits and um, I did a lot of uh, stunts on the show. So, um, but, but I just enjoyed working with the girls. We had good times and, you know, we traveled to Hawaii and stuff. So w it was just a nice show. It felt like my home show. So, um, although then I go and do Jaws 2 or, or other shows, and um, of course, the stunts on some of the movies were much bigger stunts than, than we did on Charlie's Angels, although I did car hits on Charlie's Angels um, and high falls and things like that, but um, in horse work and motorcycle work and I mean, every kind of work you can imagine I did on Charlie's Angels. But the bigger stunts were done on movies because they had bigger budgets and they wanted more, could show more than TV could show. You know, you know what I'm saying. So, yeah. um, I don't know. I just love working. So it, it didn't matter to me what I was doing as long as I was working. You've done other TV shows, too. Uh, I don't have them listed here, but anything notable uh, notable yeah. that you want to bring heart up? To heart. What's I that? did Heart to Heart doubling uh, Stephanie Powers. Okay. Um, and that was fun. I was a good double for her. 
In fact, I was just looking at a picture, and I'm hanging 300 feet off a cliff with a stuntman holding me by one hand. Wow. And my feet are fl- flailing out in the <laughs> open air, and I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, I did that? <laughs> so, yeah, we we... We did a lot of stuff, a lot of interesting things, a lot of dangerous things, of course, because that's what you get paid for. But thank goodness I'm still here. I did a show where they blew up a Learjet, and I had to walk out of this Learjet with a metal briefcase. And I had to walk 15 feet, and at that point they blew up the plane. And when they blew that plane up, I could feel the concussion coming at me and threw me down to the asphalt. As soon as I went down, a piece of door flew off of the plane and went right over my head. If I hadn't gone down at the same time, it would have cut my head off. Oh. And it went right to the cameras, and luckily the cameras were all protected. But um, that was a job that, that I could have easily not showed up the next morning for work. <laughs> Oh. So, um, I have a lot of those stories. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's where a workman conversation comes in. <laughs> of course, if you lose your head, I guess it doesn't help. No, I don't think so. <laughs> you don't show up for work the next day. <laughs> no. No. So, oh, gee, um uh, I'm going to put you on the spot here on this question. What is, what would you say is the biggest stunt you've ever done? Where well, that is on the spot. <laughs> yep. Um, I don't know, cannon roll, I guess, where the car flips over in the air like three times and the doors fly off. It's so severe. And then I did a stunt where I was in the back seat, and uh, a stuntman by the name of Gary McClarty, who was real famous, we're going 60 miles an hour. He puts the car in a slide, and we hit a block wall in Los Angeles. We just slide sideways and hit the block wall. I was black and blue from the seat belt all the way around me. I hit one side of the car, and I hit the other side of the car. That was dangerous. Another job I did on Charlie's Angels, I had to jump out of the car. I was doubling Cheryl. And for some reason, the stuntman, instead of going 10 miles an hour, decided to floor it. I don't know what happened, but we ended up jumping out, and uh, it was on an airplane runway. I had hardly any pads on because the girls always wore tight clothing, so I couldn't wear pads under a lot of the things I did. Um, and I, I ended up having a concussion in, in a near-death experience, if you can believe that, on that show. I, um, I almost died, and, and my friend, who Julie Johnson, who was doubling fair at the time, she almost died, too. She went into convulsions and, and almost died. So that was probably one of the most dangerous, although, you know, I've had a few through the years. <laughs> So, um, but but I'm still alive and I'm still walking and talking and doing everything and lifting weights and staying in shape. So, I'm lucky. What can I say? I'm very lucky. You're you're not retired now, are you? Yes, I'm retired. Oh, you're retired. Oh, yeah. What was the last? I wanted thing to you... retire before I did something that I couldn't walk away from. Oh. <laughs> What's the last thing you've done? Oh, I think in 1986 was the last show I worked. Oh, wow. <laughs> that goes back. Yeah, okay. exactly. Exactly. Wow. I put 20 years in, though. But I, I actually started in the movie business at five years old. I was a little actress. My sister was an actress. She had a TV series called National Velvet. She played Velvet with the horse. Okay. So I, I actually started when I was very young. And I didn't start doing stunt work until I was, you know, 18, 19 years old. So, and and then I I got 20 years in. So that was enough for me. I was lucky, you know, because I did the hard stuff. I jumped out of cars. I got hit by cars. I did high falls. I did car work. So I did all the hard jobs, jobs that you know sometimes you can be killed on. So. Um, it was enough for me. I had a, a few injuries. I broke my back in seven places. Um, 
And after I broke my back in seven places, the doctor said, you'll never go back to stunt work again. And I said, yes, I will. Six months later, I got a job, and it was a stair fall. And Vic Morrow had to slap me, and I had to go down 27 stairs. No pads. I'm in a dress. And um, that was my first job after breaking my back in seven places. It worked fine. And I was so happy, and, and this, the crew people all clapped for my stair fall. So that made me real happy. And I knew then that I was back to work. <laughs> so... You had mentioned to Steve uh, and myself that you had worked with uh, Alfred Hitchcock. Now, what was that on? Uh, was it Torn Curtain or what was you that? Know, I, you know, I don't know. Um, it was at Universal. I know that. And I only worked a couple days, and I don't remember what it was, but I remember working with him on on the set and, and what it was like and, you know, the experience of everybody being quiet on the set when he walked on. He was a real nice man, but he had few words to say. Um, and when he talked, you know, you knew he was talking, and you list, everybody listened to him. So it was just interesting. It was just different, you know. Yeah, Alfred Hitchcock is the one that got me uh, interested in movies to begin with, you know. Oh, my. Yeah. Oh, I, my. I went to a midnight screening back in 1996, it was winter of 1996 of Psycho, and uh, it, mm. it kind of changed the way I looked at movies, and uh, I started uh, got into film criticism just that year, and uh, I still do uh -huh. that, and uh, I was honored to have his, uh, uh, one of his granddaughters come on here and, for a tribute interview to him and, uh, and uh -huh. <clears throat> pay tribute to him, so yeah, always admired okay. his work. Oh, yeah. He what? was he was quite a personality, you know. He was like I said, he was very quiet on the set, but you could hear him talk. He had this distinctive voice, and um, it was just interesting working with him, watching how he set up shows, and you know, watching how he set up the what he was doing. It, it was very um, interesting. I liked it a lot. So I was lucky, you know, to work with different people and experience that. Who would you say uh, uh, was your favorite director to work with? Oh. <laughs> uh, I think Joe Alves was pretty cool because I had worked with Joe Alves on Jaws too, and okay. I had worked with him before, before he was even a director, and he was just a nice guy, and w we had a nice time, and uh, then when I worked with him on Jaws 2, he was directing me, and um, he was just so cool. He just let me do whatever I wanted to do that would, you know, give me ideas, and um, he had so much patience, and uh, the scene turned out great. I mean, we worked six months on my scene, so a lot of hours, a lot of long, hard work, uh, and I, I can still remember him saying, Gene, go into the sparklies meaning the boat going out into the middle of the ocean and it, when the sun was going down and you see the light on the uh, water flipping around. And he wanted that shot all the time. We did that for days. Go into the sparklies, and I can still hear him saying that. And I, I always would crack up when he said that to me. So I think he was. He was just, you know, a real nice guy. But there was a lot of nice directors. I was friends with a lot of nice directors. Daniel Petrie was one of them, who was at Universal. He real quiet, mellow guy, and easy to work with, and, you know, just was very talented. So there was a lot of directors that, that I enjoyed working with. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I had Joe Elves on here last month as well. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep, yep, talking about Jaws, I guess. Uh, um, I, I I believe he said his his, his uh, daughter was getting married, so I asked him if Bruce the Shark was showing up, and he said, "Nope." Nope. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Was no. he pleased? Huh? Was he pleased in the end? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think uh, I think Joe was Joe was a great interviewer. I enjoyed chatting with him and. He had no, uh -huh. uh, no, nothing negative to say. He, he um, talked a lot of Jaws and, <laughs> among other uh -huh. things, yeah, yeah. He was nice. He yeah. was a nice man. Yeah. Easy to work with. My goodness, very quiet. You know, just 
real laid back and and it was a hard show working on water is is very difficult you know challenging but he just held his cool and and got it done little by little so it it was really nice i enjoyed working that show a lot I, i'm i was sorry it ended actually well you know what you and i have something in common today i've done what's that i've done two <laughs> interviews today and you're my second and uh i know i'm your first and you're about yes. to go talk to steve <laughs> yes yes Oh, Greg, it's so nice talking with you. Thanks so much. I enjoyed it so much. Yeah. I was wondering if before you go, if you would do a plug for my show. Absolutely. Yeah, just just state your name. And, of course, my name is Greg Gilbert. My show is called Python's Paradise, Python Like the Snake. And I'm out of New uh-huh. Brunswick. Uh, yeah, I'm from New Brunswick, Canada. You ever been here? No, I haven't. <laughs> no. Yeah. So just state your name, say you're listening to Python's Paradise with Greg Gilbert from New Brunswick, Canada. You got all that? No. (laughs) (laughs) Riding fast. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, nobody knows where we are here in New Brunswick. (laughs) New Brunswick. Yeah, New Brunswick, Canada. No, I'm going to have to look it up. Yeah, New, make sure it's New Brunswick, Canada, because I guess there's one in, uh, New, I think, New Jersey as well. So we want to make sure we get the right one. You set? Okay. Okay, go. Hi, my name is Jean Coulter. You're listening to Greg Gilbert, New Brunswick, Canada, Python. Paradise. <laughs> Paradise. Yes. Yeah. How could I forget that? <laughs> yeah. Oh well. You know. Well, Jean, it was fantastic hearing your stories, and um, you know, it's interesting because uh, I didn't know I was going to be doing two interviews today, but I'm. I've certainly loved um, hearing about your experience, and yes, I got to watch the end and see how funny that uh. is. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much. I I enjoy telling the stories too. You know, brings back good memories. So Absolutely. we all all enjoy it. So thanks so much. I really enjoy talking with you and speaking today. Absolutely. Well, God bless you, and you have yourself a wonderful day. You as well. Thanks so much, Greg. Take care. Yep. Bye. Bye. <laughs> 